Hello and welcome to Excel Video 315. I'm Nate Moore. I'm leaving tomorrow to speak for a vendor who's got all kinds of client related data and what we're trying to do is help their representatives visit the clients and really help them understand the data they're holding on to. If I haven't spoken to your group and you want to make better use of the data you've got, I'd love to. We're going to step back from some of the complicated calculations and all the different things we've been doing for the last several Excel videos now to uh, show you a little bit about this pivot table field list. I want to show you some options that are here and some things that may help you. The first thing, if you haven't seen this already, if you're going to present a pivot table and you don't want to show this pivot table field list, it's in the way and you, you want to save your screen real estate for the pivot table because you've got it set up the way you want it, you can turn it off here or you can turn it on and off from the pivot table tools, options, and field list. Turn it on and off this way. So if it's in your way, great. Once you've got the fields that you want dragged down, there are a couple other ways you can format this pivot table field list that you might find helpful. From this drop down here, the, the default and the one we start with is this field selection and areas section stack. It's hard for me to read. I hope you can. Here's fields section and the, the whole areas are now side by side. So if you like them this way, I am just used to having them this way with rows and columns and values there just because rows and columns are kind of the way they show up in the pivot table. But if you prefer this, you can certainly put all your fields down this way and then drag them across. A couple of more options. If you only want to see the fields that are in the pivot table, you can do that. And if you want to only see the areas, you can do that as well. There's two by two and one by four. Two by two is probably one you may use, particularly if you've already got all the fields you need out of your pivot table field list and dragged down here and it's kind of crowded here and you can't see all four fields. What you may say is, you know what, Nate, I'm going to do this. I've got the fields I need. I might drag between and put doctor here and years there or something like that. Ah, uh, yeah, go ahead and replace them. But I've got the fields I need here and I'm just moving from place to place. Two by two or one by four with a little more room this way are two other ways to display the data. So that's what I wanted to show you today. That's where we start. But if some of these are helpful for you, I wanted to show you how you might organize or manage the fields and the row and column and values areas in your pivot table. Before we leave, I want to show you one last thing. If you've got a terrifically complicated pivot table, lots of data, tons of rows that you're manipulating, what you might want to do is do this. Defer layout update. If you drag doctor out of the way, notice doctor stays. And if I drag years out of the way, years 2009, see how it's still there? It's deferred until I hit update. And now doctor goes back and years go back where they belong. I don't use this a ton. For the most part, my pivot tables aren't enormous. And I don't mind waiting a second for things to move around and, and organize the way the pivot table goes. But if you got a ton of data and you want to tell Excel, hey, wait for a minute until I hit update, that's how to do it. That's the pivot table field list and a bunch of tricks there. I want to show you a couple of more menu tricks relating to pivot tables. I'll do it next time. Thanks for watching.